Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the potential of making islands. Now, there's some built in tools and whatnot that we can look at. And uh, once upon a time, my daughter put together her little castle island tutorial that I put up on my channel, kind of off to the side, which was fun, but I never really sat down and put together a tutorial for making islands. So I'm going to put one together now. Now, um, there exists two nodes which are similar in certain respects. You have the uh, the draw node and the island node, which work based off of simply drawing things. So if I go edit island, and then I start uh, painting in here. Once it settles, it'll go ahead and it'll create an island-like shape. So if I take a look at that in two dimensions, they have sort of an island-like structure to them. But the end result is not necessarily an island. And we can, of course, go ahead and uh, try and do things to them in order to get them to have some better shape, perhaps. Um, Apex, which I'm not quite sure why it's going into a draw mode here, but tell it to do terrain instead. All right, and it will give you some very sharp angled stuff here. And we could Little something off of that, so it'll maintain the the border shape, the point where it was like connecting. But then we'll get these other slopes, and there's some other ways that we can do something very similar. But um, you would have to do a lot of shaping to get some kind of island out of this. So if you need like a series of little islands and whatnot, this might be a useful tool to kind of play with. Um, there's there's definitely possibilities there. The draw node, uh, just like that one, we go ahead and edit, go ahead and draw something, and then it goes ahead and it builds structure. So instead of just the island shape, we're now getting, you know, a, a mountain form of some kind. This is you know, pretty intense. We could put down. There's some settings that you can, of course, play with to get a slightly different result. And then we take that off and do things like erosion. And then we could go ahead through the process of lifting it up. So with this idea in mind, I'm just going to start off with the regular mountain tool. And if you wanted to do a series of islands, you could follow similar steps to what I'm doing here and get yourself a whole range of mountains. And you could use you know, various other tools. So the general idea here is um, we uh, start with the mountain and we go through a process. This is not an absolute. This is just some ideas to try. And additionally, I just have this hanging out here because um, the mask tool is basically the, the core of those other two tools where you're basically just drawing something and then you can use it mask out stuff, but it has a bit of a softer border. So the mountain, I mean, um, we take the mountain, we can do lots of different things to it. So we had um, something that was previously called landform in the earlier uh, videos and the um, early access preview. You know, you had landform and then eventually it was changed to Carver. So it's a lot of the same sort of uh, settings and you can see that it will reshape and reform. They get some interesting kind of rock like structures. So I'm just taking the regular mountain and doing that instead of just a, a typical erosion. The shear function also goes in and you can play with, I've played with a little bit of folding and scale in order to get uh, a bit more carving into it. So it basically does sort of like a, a terracing effect, but only into certain areas. So it shatters off just different sections. 
and I've saved that off to the side for later. And it's just uh, combining a little bit further down, but we'll get there. For right now, I've got, I went from this to shatter, and I've just got a nice kind of flattened out shape. So it's just got a lot of additional detail, and that's just where I want to start. Doing an auto level on this is something that I do when I want to grab a very narrow section of the height. So if I want to grab like a sliver, or if I want to get right down to the edge, I always have to do an auto level first because that gives me more range to play with, a better range to be able to kind of isolate a specific region of the surface and get in really tight along uh, the surface. So by doing that, I was able to slice a chunk off and lift it. So we're just doing that. And this is just using intensity. So by raising it, I have the opportunity now to bring in things like water. So um, this current version of the water isn't looking great, but it gives you an idea of, you know, at least visually where you could bring up the water to and what that might look like get a little bit closer you can see a little bit of refraction in a few areas you can see like the stuff that would start to appear under the water but the general idea here is that we need to work out you know where is the point where water is going to meet it so any kind of reference point will work but this is just one of them because water is typically going to be done in you know, an alternative 3D software. So our goal now is to go ahead and try and you know, build up maybe some sandbars that will meet this region here. So I'm going to do that by just doing a blur and then chopping off a portion of the top here and then merging it back with itself. So I'm coming in here and I'm merging back in using the max mode at 100%. And what that's going to do is it's just going to keep the highest point. Now, I do this, this clamp section because, unfortunately, when you, you do this, you're going to have areas that will show up. So just uh, cut off sections. If you notice that there's a, an issue and the clamp can be set to clip mode, which means it will just slice off whatever it doesn't, uh, doesn't need. So we've done that. And the sandbars are not quite high enough yet. I mean, if I had not raised it up so far, that probably would be fine, but I did. So I'm going to have to go again. And I just do another blur with that one and then clip that top area and then bring it back in. So as you can see, we go from here to here and it raises up and you can do it as many times as you feel that you need to. I figured that was enough. And then I went ahead and did an erosion. Now the erosion, it wasn't done just as is. I, I took away all my dumb uh, cutting. I took my rock softness down quite a bit because I didn't want it to eat away on the whole surface. Let me just show you what happens with erosion if we just use the defaults. So if I do that, you notice that there's quite a difference in terms of how much it eats away at the form. And that might be okay in some cases, but for what I wanted, I wanted to maintain you know, a lot of the shape that I had originally enjoyed and, and wanted to keep. So just coming in here and making changes. So you can do things like you could change the scale. And so that would affect how far it would do. Um, and we could play with that. But uh, I was able to get enough out of it just by taking down the rock softness quite a bit and taking down the down cutting. And then the main thing that I wanted, of course, was just sedimentation. I wanted the sand to come in. So I went ahead and just took the inhibition way up. Then doing another blur, clamping off the top, sticking that in, allowed me to just fill in some of the, the crevices that it was making. And we hit 
the uh, the carver mode, and that's gonna eat away at stuff and shear, and we bring that back in. So that's again set to max, and that's just also helping me build out some areas here. So a lot of what happens when the water sort of eats away at it is it eats away at chunks, things break off, some stuff is softly eroded. I could have done some, maybe some hydro erosion to this. That also would have been possible. So I could do hydro. What that does is does like a, a blur around the outside. So it softens around instead of blurring the whole thing. So it just softens the edges. And that's something that could be done. And then of course, I wouldn't want that to happen everywhere. I want it to happen to that region. So I would have used the height to kind of control that. But I was fine with some of this. So I pretty much went with it as is. So in evaluation, just take a look at where the water is. We can see what's going on here. All right, I have a nice little island. I've got some area that's, that's narrow. It comes up into a big mountainous area. I've got some nice little flat areas that are sitting around in here. Some rock structures. So it's a pretty nice shape. And I figured let's go ahead and do some texturing. Now, to texture it off, I want to think about where do I want the beaches to happen? Where do I want the grass to happen? Where do I want the rocks to happen? In breaking up these zones, one of the things that I like to use these days is playing with snowfall. Snowfall can be useful for just kind of picking out areas. So by running a snowfall, um, I just did a uh, height and inverted that for my uh, my snowfall and my melt. So this is providing where snowfall happens. This is providing where melting happens. And then this node, of course, is responding to that. Let's get it to recalculate. Um, so I'm using my snowfall mask and my melt mask, and I'm definitely playing with scale. This, um, if you look at my other video talking about this, where we can play with the snow in order to create different um, scale elements, you can do it with erosion as well. Uh, it really helps you kind of isolate little sections in around the grooves of the rocks and um, in this particular case, using these melt and snowfall masks, I'm able to ensure that the snow basically only happens in this lower region, and then I'm able to melt it off to the edge just to get it into these little areas here. And that's just perfect for making our little beach fronts. I'm using snowfall again. And once again, I'm playing with scale. Again, to make sure that I get into the little grooves, in around the rocks, so I get lots of detail out of my terrain. Snowfall by it itself, if you don't start messing with the the, uh, the terrain scale and the verticality, is um, going to cover a lot of it, and you're going to lose sometimes a lot of these little details. So um, I often take it in and play with it, and especially if I'm going to use it for the purposes of like creating some grass. So of course, from the original, I'm taking a soil and then I put the soil into another soil so I get some smaller gauge information. So I'll use this for some information and this for, some, for others. This smaller one I'm using to work out two greens. So two sat maps for green. And then I'm using a perlin soil, which I uh, refine a little bit in order to get some breakup. And that way it's not all very even. I'll have some brighter and some darker areas. And that patchiness will give me something just a little bit more visually interesting. 
that's all I'm really doing that for. Coming off the original rock forms, I'm also running a curvature and a flow. And I uh, adjusted the amounts here just so they get a lots of little lines. I was getting some pretty thick lines that, and there was very few, to, few of them. So just by adjusting the scale and turning the rest of them on, I'm able to get a lot more lines in here. And then I just combine that with the, the curvature in order to get a different kind of mask. So one of my masks is coming off of this. The other mask is coming off of this. So I have this one where it encourages light and dark forms. And then this one where it's giving me some grays and some saturated values to sort of deal with the idea of dirt and whatnot in crevices. And combined, I get a nice complex texture. To help deal with darkening some regions, I did an occlusion. Set the power down really low so it goes into the small crevices. The higher this is, the more soft and big and round these things are. So you really have to take the power down if you want to get into the little grooves and that affects the appearance of scale. And then change the number of passes that I did in order to end up with something that would give me a little bit of additional darkening. So just breaking that form up a little bit more. And this helps with the integration of the grass when I bring the grass in. So remember once again, my snowfall is determining where rock exists and where grass exists. So I've got my grass texture, I've got my rock texture now, I mask it with that, and now we've got something that works here. And of course I could push it a little bit further and there's a few other videos from Dax and, and some of these other guys that are using this regularly that uh, could give you some other ideas of how to add even more detail to this. I can think of a few ideas, but I don't want to make this video too long. And uh, that's it. We just need to go ahead and take our little snowfall here. And I just took my snowfall and I added some of that height to it just to get a little bit more of a gradient off of some of this. And I use that to combine in a sand, which I pulled off my original soil. A subtle variation, there's not a lot. I'll bring it in. So there we have it, some nice little sandbars. We got some you know, grass areas, some rocky areas, and uh, you can push it further from this and see where you go. And, um, in your final render, of course, you'll have some different water and you'll be able to get that uh, the little details down here in there. You could always go ahead and do another um, snow pass that would fill in the sandbars. You could take something like this into substance or even just Photoshop, just take the texture and you'll get an idea you know, where things lie and where they don't. But uh, you could use that to fill sand into here instead of the, uh, the grass that's been masked in. So hopefully this has given you some ideas of where you can take this. Again, you know, for texturing purposes, playing with the, uh, the snow to help you mask off regions and isolate them using, you know, the, uh, the snowfall mask and the melt mask. And the process of building up sandbars by using the blur and max to help you get like a starting point in there before you get into erosion and again playing with you know how far that pushes it so it doesn't destroy everything. Just getting everything to look a little bit nicer and of course bring in additional details if you like. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next video.